Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to find the centroid of an object. In this case, it's not a voluminous object. It's a bracket that's bent into different shapes, and that has a hole cut out, it's a rectangular hole here. We're trying to find the centroid of it. So instead of trying to find the volume of each piece, we're simply going to find the area of each piece. That will work as well. Here we have the matrix that we want to fill out. We want to establish the area of each item. Remember that any cutout would be a negative area. So let's label the numbers. Let's call this area number one. Let's call this cutout area number two. This vertical piece, area number three. And this horizontal piece, area number four. Notice that the dimensions are written here. This is five by three. So the area of piece number one is 15, including the hole. The hole itself is two units long and one unit wide. That would be a total of two square units. That would be a negative two. For area number three, it's five units long and two units high. That's 10. And for the flat portion, again, it's five by two, which is also 10. So we have all the areas established. Now we need to find the x, the y, and the z components of the centroids of each individual area. For the horizontal piece at the top, in the x direction, that would be halfway from here to here, that would be 1.5. For the hole, it's also in the middle. Notice it's one unit, one unit, one unit. It's right in the middle. So the centroid in the x direction for the missing piece is also 1.5. For the vertical piece here, the x centroid would be exactly three units away from the z-axis. And for the horizontal piece, it would be three, because the distance from there to there is three, plus halfway from there to there, that would be four. So now we've established the x-coordinates of the centroids of the four pieces. Oh, I, I got this wrong, don't I? This should be a three, actually. Yeah, I just noticed here that this should be a three. And uh, now that's better. Okay, otherwise I'm going to confuse everyone, including myself. For the y coordinates on the horizontal piece, that would be the distance from the origin upward. Since this is too high, the y coordinate would be 2. Also, for the missing piece, on the vertical piece, that would be halfway from here to the top, it's a height of 2, that would be 1. And the horizontal piece here, it's right, uh, the Y in the y direction would be right on the x, z plane, therefore that would be zero. In the z direction, from there to there, for the horizontal piece, that would be halfway from there to there, that's five units, that would be two and a half. For the cutout point, it starts at two, it ends at four, the middle point would be at three. For the vertical part, that would also be two and a half. And for the horizontal piece, that would also be two and a half. So now we've found all the centroids of all the four pieces, the x, y, and the z coordinates. A quick check here on the cutout portion, starts at two, ends at four, halfway point would be at three, that's correct. All right, and there it's two and a half. Now we're going to multiply the x coordinate times the area, the y coordinates times the area, and the z coordinates times the area to find the product. 1.5 times 15 is 22.5. 1.5 times a negative 2 is a negative 3. 3 times 10 is 30. And 4 times 10 is 40. Now for the y coordinates times the area, we get 30 minus 4, 10, and 0. And for the z coordinates, 2.5 times 15, that would be 37.5. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, 2.5 times 10 is 25, and 2.5 times 10 is 25. Now we're ready to sum these up. We sum up these columns right here, and we get 70, uh, that would be 90, 92.5 minus 3, that would be 89.5. Adding these up, that would be 40 minus 4, that's 36. And here we get 50 plus 31 and a half. I subtract 6 from that. I get 31 and a half plus 50 would be 81.5. I'm now ready to find the x, the y, and the z coordinate of the centroid of the whole piece. We know that the x coordinate is going to be equal to the sum of the individual x coordinates of each individual piece multiplied times the area divided by the total area. 
In this case, that would be equal to, oh, we didn't calculate the total area yet. 15, 25, 35 minus 2 is 33. So it would be 89.5. That's an equal sign divided by 33, which is equal to, let's get a calculator, 89.5 divided by 33 equals, and that would be 2.71. To find the y-coordinate of the centroid, that's equal to the sum of all the y-coordinates of each individual piece multiplied times the area of each piece, divided by the sum of the total area. And in this case, that would be equal to 36 divided by 33, and that would be equal to 36 divided by 33 equals 1.091, 1 Nine. We'll just keep the decimal places. And finally, the z-coordinate of the centroid is equal to the sum of all the z-coordinates of all of the centroids of individual pieces times the area of each piece divided by the sum of the total area. And that would be equal to 81.5 divided by 33. In that case, 81.5 divided by 33 is 2.47. Or seven. So checking where that would be in the x-coordinate, that would be 2.71 units away from the x-axis, or I should say away from the yz plane, that's a better way to look at it. In the y-direction, upward, that would be 1.09, that would be just slightly above one unit above the xz plane. In the z-direction, 2.47, that would be almost at the halfway point between here and here from the xy plane into the z-direction. And that's how we find the centroids of any object, just split up into individual pieces, find the centroid of each piece in the x, the y, and the z direction, find the area of each piece, in this case, because it's a bracket that's, that's uh, formed in that particular shape with a hole cut out of it, and then you just simply divide the sum of the products of the x-coordinate of each individual piece times the area, divide by the total area, and in that way you get the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, and z-coordinate as you go down the line. And that's how we find the centroid of any object.